Newcastle Fans TV. Hi everybody, welcome back to NFTV. It's been a manic 24 hours for every single Jody across up and down the land, across the world, wherever you are. And we had to get our famous number nine, Alan Shearer. Alan, thank you for coming on once again at short notice. What's your emotions? What's your feelings? Tell me. Oh, I'm like you guys. I'm like the thousands that were at St James's Park last night. My son was there with all his uh, with all his pals. Um, I mean, the place has just gone berserk, and so it should do because um, for 14 years we've had nothing to cheer, we've had nothing to look forward to, we've not been involved, we've had no say. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted that um, that eventually. Um, our club is back in the hands of the fans and uh, they've eventually got something to say because they've not been listened to for far too long. And uh, it's going to take time. I think we all have to be patient as much as we'd all love it to be um, success immediately. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, now we've got our club back and we've got a little bit of hope, which we've not had for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Were you not tempted seeing the scenes there? Because Sam Fender was down there with his saxophone player standing on the statue of Jackie Milburn. You know what it is? I actually, I actually, I actually drove past the stadium. Uh, I had to drive past the stadium because I was I was driving back up from uh, from down south, and I drove past the stadium at around about four o'clock, and it was just starting to 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 build up and uh, and I thought shall I or shan't I and I thought no that's just stupid <laughs> anyway I drove I drove past it and I drove uh, I drove back home um, my son he was he got on the train from London and he got in at about half five I think something like maybe five or ten minutes before the announcement was made so he went straight to St James's Park he's I mean he's a proper Newcastle fan he's a lunatic um, in a nice way um, but. So he he went and just absolutely loved it. He didn't give me video after video. Said, "Dad, this is uh, this is unbelievable." And I felt like saying, "I know your, your dad did have a crowd like that, you know, when he signed a few years ago." Which <laughs> 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 is great to see. Yeah, Sam Bender was on the BBC. I don't know if you've seen that, Alan. Hungover on the BBC breakfast this morning. <laughs> the most joyous. I was just thing getting. Yet. I was just getting out. I was just getting out of the shower last night, and um, I could hear my phone go. And I looked at it, and it was uh, Sam Fender FaceTime video on me. Um, yeah, I opened the uh, I opened the video, and I said, "Hello." And he goes, "Can I swear on here? Am I allowed to swear?" <laughs> yeah. he, he said, "He said, oh, look, and now he's naked." I, I just had a t- 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 towel around me, and he said, "Oh, this is this is amazing. This is brilliant. Thanks very much." And I think he was en route to Manchester, where he was. Um, it was definitely slightly worse for wear, and I uh, saw him on <laughs> I saw him on BBC this morning. So it was it was brilliant to see such a great lad. Looking ahead now uh, to Spurs a week on Sunday, I can't remember a, a game I've looked forward to being at so much for years and years now. Are, are you going to be there? I won't be there, unfortunately, because I've got to uh, I've got to work. I'll be doing the TV for Premier League television, believe it or not. It's been in the diary, and I can't uh, I can't get out of it. I mean, I'd love nothing more than to to be there and see and hear St James's Park rocking again as it was many years ago. I got used to going to a stadium where. There were so many different emotions, so many different feelings. There was infighting between fans in terms of rows and arguments, and he's right, she's right, she's wrong, he's right, um, and it wasn't nice to hear. So it it it, it would it would be a brilliant atmosphere with eventually everyone on the same page and singing from the same hymn sheet. And um, St James will be rocking. I hope that we've got um, we've got a few players back from uh, from injury. I hope Wilson will be fit to give us uh, to give us that threat that we'll need. Um, but yeah, um, but I mean, the, the, the team needs work. Obviously, they, they, they'll, I'm sure they'll go out and they'll tr- they'll try and sign players in January to uh, to improve us. But I think certainly this season, the um, the main thing has to be they has to get they have to keep Newcastle United in the Premier League, and then it'll be that little bit easier to uh, to, to build going forward. Yeah, I agree. War flags are going to be returning as well for the Spurs game. Alan, I wanted to ask you, I had to ask you, because Amanda's quoted you about the statue on the side of the stadium. I had to bring this up. Do you feel, because she's hinted on that she wants to move that? And I think it's right. We both do, me and Sam. I think every Newcastle fan wants that moved to near enough next to Bobby Robson. Get that bar back to its proper name as well. 
<laughs> do you want to, do you want to see that happen? Because let's face it, Alan, you put on the side, and there's no recognition for Kevin either. No, no. I mean, after what Kevin achieved for this football club, both as, as a manager, um, to not have any recognition of, of of him anywhere in the stadium, I mean, I think is is diabolical because. Newcastle wouldn't be where it is today with uh, without him. You know my relationship with Kevin. I get on really well with him and have done for years. I signed for him back in '96. I played for him as England captain when he was the England manager, and I've still got a really good relationship with him now. Um, so without without doubt, Kevin should be recognised in whatever way. For me, um, I, I don't think it would be right for me to say I want this or I think this should be done. I'll have conversations uh, uh, over time I'm sure um, there has been the odd text message there has been a, a, a conversation um, but I don't think it's right for me to, to go into what was uh, what was said all I can say is that from what I have heard and seen and spoken to and had text messages it all is incredibly positive and absolutely the same as what um, is the message that they've all been sending out in the last sort of 24 hours that everything's really positive. They want the best for the football club and um, they're going to give the fans a voice, which I think is hugely important. I mean, it's amazing that you've had communication with Amanda and Murdad already and, and you and Paul Ferris are still waiting for a phone call off Mike Ashley. Um, and, <laughs> uh, any, any, any parting message for our departing owner? No. <laughs> you, you're allowed, I said you're allowed to swear on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I think um, everyone knows the situation. Everyone's pleased that um, that the club has eventually moved on. It was it wasn't the football club that we all we all knew and we all wanted and and hoped it would be. Um, taken taken a long long time, but uh, eventually it seems as if um, we're on the right track now. And um, there are certainly better times ahead. I mean, it is just so refreshing to hear everyone back on the same page again and hear everyone singing from the same hymn sheet. It's, um, it's really positive. It's time. We, uh, we, we all wish, all, all, all us fans just wish that we could wave a magic wand and everything's going to be great going forward from next Sunday onwards. Um, but it's, it's not going to be like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. But you know what? From where we were to where we are now within 24 hours, We'll all absolutely be delighted with that. Last question, Alan. I know you're busy. Do you fear for Steve Bruce's job now? I've, I actually feel sorry for Steve and his uh, and his family of what he's had to go through and what he's been through. Um, uh, as you all know, I'm I'm a good friend of his, um, and I, I I really have disliked what I've read in certain quarters and what his family have had to go through. I get. Once you're a manager and you don't get results, you open yourself up to criticism, and there's there's no one understands that more than more than Steve. But I think he took the job on in almost impossible circumstances, and within the two years, whether you like the football or not, he get a, he got us into reasonable positions. And of course, because of the situation that he took on, um, it was always going to be very difficult for Steve. And it's been more difficult than ever this uh, this season. So whatever happens to Steve, whatever decision they, they make, I do wish him well because he's one of the nicest guys you'll meet and his family are superb. Absolutely. Um, and I should just point out as well, after you finish watching this show, read Alan's uh, column in The Athletic today. There's some absolutely superb her pieces in there from Alan, from George Colkin and, and from Chris Woff as well, isn't there, Lee? You've read it. It's quality and obviously um, George was on the Five Live as well with Matt as well, so yeah, there's quality stuff in Athletic. Brilliant. Great. Thanks for having me on, guys. And um, Thanks, Alan. We're back. Have a good night. Come on. Sure Come on.